Hey everybody, Ole AK Chalk one here with a bit of a different video. This will be an audio tutorial on how to use DX Story and Voice Meter to do application level audio track recording when you're recording gameplay. I did an OBS streaming tutorial video before, which was very popular, so I figured I'd give you a shot at how I consider to achieve the holy grail of recording, which is having your mic, game sounds, and your comm sounds from TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever you use in separate tracks. The ability to have those separated is amazing because it allows you to separate not only volume control, but also being able to mute certain things, you know, say that there's a lot of noise going on in the game and it's really overshadowing the cool tactical communication going on in TeamSpeak. You can just mute or lower the volume in the game sound. A lot of tools for recording let you separate your microphone from all your desktop computer sounds. For example, Action, which I really like for recording Let's Play videos, it does that, but it stops there. It never lets you go that step further to have it actually by application. It's a bit tricky, but I'll show you how I do this. We're looking here at Premiere, and you can see a video I recorded in Daisy, and you can see the three audio tracks below. Um, the first one is the actual game sounds. The second track is my microphone, and the third track is TeamSpeak. You can see just how much more talking is happening in TeamSpeak than in the game or by myself. So that's a very common thing. So for example, I may want to edit out some laughter happening in TeamSpeak because it's overlapping with some in-game communication, especially in a game like DayZ where people will talk to you in game and it's usually quieter than your TeamSpeak sounds. So you have the ability to completely control what you want to do with that. The way we do that is in DX Story, which is the only recording tool that I'm aware of that lets you record different audio channels or tracks. It lets you do up to eight of them. My setup here, you can see in the first one, I have basically the game sound, which is my default audio device inside of Windows. And it's, it's one of the voice meter devices. We'll get to that. My second one is my actual USB microphone, which is my recording. And then the third one is one of the virtual audio cables that's installed by voice meter. And I have it named VAC2 comms. So for TeamSpeak, you can rename these in Windows. Voice meter comes with this mixer tool that gives you a visual representation of the different inputs. You can actually have different physical inputs plugged in, whether that be a mic or something else. It's a lot, it's, it's, it's very flexible and gives you almost hardware mixer like controls, but I'm a bit limited. You can actually see when I'm playing music in the browser, that virtual output is my default device. You can actually see the bars moving up and down. I've got this piped out into two different outputs, one of them being my headset, the other one actually going to my streaming PC for when I do stream. I can tweak those volumes up and down separately, which is nice because maybe, you know, it's too loud for the stream, but it's good in my headphones, or I can just simply filter them out and say, you know what, I only want this input to go to output A or only output B. So for example, if one of them is the mic, I may not want to hear myself back in my headset. So it has a lot of other options that I won't get into, but one thing it installs, when you look in the audio devices in Windows, you'll see these virtual audio cable devices. They're similar to the other virtual audio cables you may be familiar with, but they work a lot better. So I'm using one of these in TeamSpeak. If you look at my settings here, you can actually see that the output device that I've chosen for TeamSpeak is the VAC2 comms cable. Now, if I don't have this mixer tool, TeamSpeak will output audio to the virtual audio cable, but it's not actually going anywhere. The mixer allows me to transfer that virtual audio cable sound coming from TeamSpeak into my headset, as well as that second output, like I said earlier. What I'm showing you here on the screen, you can't hear the difference in the video, but I heard the difference in my headset, and that's because of the way that I have to record my desktop audio for this particular video. But it's very flexible, and you can do this with more than just TeamSpeak. You can do it with any application that lets you choose the playback device, whether that be Skype, um, VLC for playing music, or other, other any other tool that lets you do that, basically. And you can do it with more than just one of them. 
It has several other options in this voice meter as well that are very mixer and yeah, EQ like that I'm not really all that familiar with. I just leave them alone, but you can do a lot of stuff. And considering it's a freeware tool, it's quite amazing. So DX Story, when it records the video now, it actually f puts them all together into that one video file, but we need to extract the different audio tracks into individual files. So when you do that, we're looking here at the single AVI file that I recorded in day Z. How we get them out is when you right click on it, DX Story installs this little extract audio stream shortcut. When you click on that, it actually extracts three separate audio files, one per each of the audio tracks that you have configured in DX Story. So I'm gonna end up with three of them, one for the game sounds, one for the mic, and one for TeamSpeak, which you saw earlier inside of Premiere. And you have all that flexibility with what you wanna do with it, which is really, really amazing. I wanna suggest that you give this a try, play around with it a little bit, um, it's not 100% intuitive, but hopefully this guide will help you. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them, but I'll also include a link to the Voice Meter website. Um, the developer is very active on Google Plus and on his website, and new versions are coming out every other every few weeks or so. So it's a great little tool. Highly recommend you check it out if you want more control over your audio channels when you're recording gameplay. Thank you for watching.